bring up that this week uh, we we discussed uh, uh, a number of issues related to dynamic inventory problems under certainty. Now, during this session, that is uh, the fifth uh, the lecture sessions, uh, specifically, I will be dealing with uh, the determination of optimal order quantity under constraints. Uh, the till now, uh, while uh, we we determine the order quantity or optimal order quantity for a given uh, inventory control system, uh, we have assumed that, that there is no constraints. But in a real world situation, uh, the many a time uh, we we have many types of constraints, and uh, when uh, these constraints are acting, it is quite natural that uh, uh, that uh, you determine the optimal order quantity uh, in the presence of these constraints. So, what sort of uh, the approach uh, we should follow? So, this is uh, the first uh, uh, the topic we are going to discuss. And then uh, we will bring in the concept of optimal policy curve. And uh, if you can use, if you can develop the optimal policy curve, uh, for a given uh, inventory, for an inventory item, uh, it will help you in uh, uh, in assessing uh, the present uh, the level of performance, and uh, for improving uh, the performance, uh, what approach you should follow. So, uh, so anybody who is considered to be uh, an expert in uh, inventory management, uh, he or she must be aware of the concept of optimal policy curve. And then obviously, we will be taking up uh, a number of uh, numerical examples. Now, let us uh, the talk about uh, uh, the optimal ordering policy for more than one item. Okay, so, uh, we will uh, definitely explain uh, the approach which uh, you need to opt for, uh, for determining uh, optimal order quantity uh, under constraints, uh, but uh, what we will uh, try to do that means uh, while explain the procedure, uh, so we will bring in certain examples, so that your understanding uh, is proper and uh, you know what are the critical issues to be considered while you deal with such a case. So, in the problem formulations as mentioned in the previous lecture sessions, that means in the last uh, uh, the previous four lecture sessions, what we have assumed, we we assumed uh, two specific uh, aspects or two specific assumptions. The first, uh, we have assumed there is a single item case. That means the whatever the formulae we we have used, they are applicable for one item. And what we are assuming that the same uh, uh, the set of formulae you also can uh, use for other items. But uh, item wise that means single item wise you have to use those uh, uh, say that formulae. So, that is one assumption and the second assumptions already I have mentioned that is no constraints. That means, you refer to the assumptions related to the classical EOQ formula. You just uh, uh, you, will, you might have noticed that there are some 10 uh, assumptions uh, against uh, the classical EOQ formula. And, uh, and uh, if you look into all these assumptions, you will find that uh, essentially there is uh, no constraints we have assumed. Now, we will have to relax these assumptions one by one. And the first, uh, uh, you know, we will assume that, uh, uh, that, uh, that constraints are present of different types. And if the constraints are present, what will be the modified, uh, say, the UQ expression? Now, in the majority of the cases, we come across a situation where more than one item, the multiple items may be considered jointly while determining the optimal order quantity item wise. So, this is uh, everywhere when you study an existing inventory control systems for uh, an organization. So, you come across this situation okay. and there may be one or more of the constraints of varieties as I have already pointed out that these constraints uh, may be of uh, the different types. So, the varieties of constraints you come across under which 
the ordering policy is to be developed okay now these constraints are of many types so there are uh, three specific uh, uh, types of constraints uh, we need to consider many a time in the majority of the cases the first one is the restriction there could be restriction on the number of orders there could be restriction on the inventory investment like at any point in time so you need to compute the average inventory in monetary terms so sometimes this is referred to as uh, the inventory investment so one of the objectives of uh, the of the inventory management is uh, to control uh, the inventory investment okay maintaining uh, uh, say uh, an acceptable condition or acceptable performance level so you need to consider restriction on inventory investment and uh, there could be restriction on the storing storing space for inventory so this is just i have given uh, three examples but there could be many such examples on uh, the restrictions the question is how to formulate inventory problems under constraints now let us discuss the problem citing an example i have already explained that uh, let uh, this problem be explained uh, the referring to uh, one typical uh, say the problem so what is these examples a work unit of a plant maintains inventories of five items what are these five items they are specified as 1 2 3 4 and 5 what is si that means for the ith item what is the annual demand per uh, uh, say the per uh, say per uh, per, e per each item and what is cui that is uh, Uh, what is the unit price or the purchase price for uh, for ith item so against uh, each item we have uh, the values of si and cui as given in the table so si is the annual demand for item i and cui is the unit price for item i okay it's very simple now for each item the current ordering policy so the first uh, anywhere you go Uh, with respect to a particular item uh, if you find there is a stock of item obviously there is an inventory policy inventory control system whether the inventory control system is uh, good or bad uh, that's a different issue but there is an inventory system so this is referred to as the existing ordering policy so suppose that uh, uh, under existing uh, or the current ordering policy uh, you need to Uh, place an order for each item once per month okay so that is the existing policy so the how many orders you place for each item per year obviously there are 12 orders uh, per year and uh, so the number of orders per year that is 12 for each item under current ordering policy and average inventory you can also calculate assuming uh, that uh, the demand is uniform and uh, uh, so you can calculate the average inventory so so these values are 75 375 500 in monetary terms rupees 2500 750 and the total average inventory investment is 4200 so this is just an example now how do you calculate this average inventory that means just uh, for example for item 2 average inventory is computed as 900 into 10 that is uh, the price by 2 into 12 that means the month wise there is an order so you have the total demand as 900 divided by 12 that means that is the each month's demand in physical units and the price is uh, actually 10 and half of uh, uh, the order quantity is the average demand that is that's why it is uh, divided by 2 so 
so the total value is 375 so same rule you apply for other items also suppose c0 is 10 that means ordering this is just an illustrative example so if the order ordering cost for order is just 10 and i that is the inventory carrying cost is 0 0.12 same for all the given items now this i and the other i is slightly different that i stands for uh, the ith uh, you know the item whereas this i actually the stands for the inventory carrying cost as a proportion of the average inventory which you hold we calculate the total variable cost so it consists of ordering cost and uh, the inventory carrying cost so under current ordering policy so what is the total you know uh, the variable cost that is 60 how many orders uh, you you need to uh, meet the demand of all the uh, the five items that is 60 orders and for each order uh, separately you are placing uh, uh, you you are incurring a cost of placing an order so that is uh, the 10 per order that means 60 into 10 and this is uh, the 12 percent is or the 12 percent is your inventory carrying cost so the 0 0.12 into 4200 okay this is the average inventory so this is rupees 1104 suppose we use the classical eoq classical economic order quantity wilson slot size formula for the given items the optimal order size and orders per year for each item can be calculated using the following expressions of EOQ. So that you can do, that means this is uh, in monetary terms the order quantity, that means what you do, this is your original EOQ expressions in monetary terms. If you multiply it with uh, the unit price, you get the expressions of EOQ but in monetary terms. So you use this formula to calculate the EOQ for each item in monetary terms so when you do this uh, so what you what you get that means item wise uh, optimal order size that you get and orders per year when uh, uh, the total uh, say the, uh, the the demand is known a yearly demand or annual demand is known so this way you compute for each item and what you get that the optimal order size is 8081 okay and uh, orders per year is 48.49 when uh, the classical uq uh, formula you use uh, for determination of the order quantity for each item so here the orders per year for an, an item is calculated as si cui that means annual demand in monetary units and divided by the order quantity that means the TOQ expression in monetary terms. So, this formula you use and then again you calculate the optimal total variable cost for this EOQ based ordering policy. So, what is this uh, the total variable cost to the optimal that is uh, the 10 per order into the number of orders that is the 48.49 per year and uh, this is the inventory carrying cost is it okay so this is uh, uh, the total uh, inventory and uh, divided by 2 is the average inventory so so this is the total value is 970 hence there is a decrease of uh, say 134 the previously it was 1104 so now it has become 970 so there is a decrease of 134 around 12% in the total variable cost with the use of EOQ based ordering policy. So, this is an improved situation, there is this improvement if you uh, if you use uh, the EOQ based ordering policy. Now, let us now go for the further analysis of this problem. Certain important observations we, we have out of the results obtained. So, this uh, important observations I am explaining one by one. First one is the average inventory investment is rupees 4040 and the number of orders is 48.49. Now in many situations there may be shortage of working capital and hence an investment of rupees 4040 in inventory may not be possible. 
so there may also we not be possible to place 48.49 orders because of many reasons so by the existing purchase order department so mainly because of uh, say the manpower shortage or non availability of adequate infrastructure now if you have this sort of restrictions or the constraints the question remains how to consider these constraints in the formulation of the problem so that we are able to determine optimal ordering policy of an inventory item now the problem under constraints can be classified under two categories so you should be aware of that means what are these two categories of problems first category is minimize total cost subject to meeting one restriction or the constraint so this is the first category and the second category is you need to minimize the total cost or the total relevant cost subject to meeting more than one restriction or the constraint simultaneously okay now you need to determine the values of the decision variables so mainly the ordering quantity now let us first consider the first type of problem that means just uh, one set of constants you have with the given data set already uh, the data sets data set is given let there be a restriction on an average inventory investment to rupees 3000 so ex existing one it is 4040 but just you restrict it to 3000 how to determine the optimal order quantity for each item now what do you need to do that is uh, we need to use the lagrangian method to formulate such a problem and to solve the problem so what is that problem that is minimize the total cost subject to restriction on inventory investment so what is that restriction restriction is the inventory investment is uh, is limited to just 3000 so how do you formulate the problem minimize the total cost the total cost expression is this one this part is for the i for the for uh, you know for uh, the total number of items uh, what is uh, the total ordering cost and this is uh, for the set of items that is the total number of items what is uh, the total you know uh, uh, so the inventory carrying cost or inventory holding cost is it okay so subject to or such that that this this is essentially this part uh, represents the average inventory investment so this average inventory investment that means the total for all the items all the five items that we have taken up is restricted to 3000 so this is the formulation of the problem so what do we try to do we form lagrangian this is a this is a well known uh, the technique well known uh, say the method we use so we form the lagrangian denoted as capital l that is uh, this part that is your condition that means you try to minimize this total cost that is the ordering cost and uh, the inventory carrying cost plus so the lambda time this is the constraint that means this is the average inventory investment restricted to 3000 so where lambda is the lagrangian multiplier so what do you try to do for you need to minimize capital l over qi and lambda so we take partial derivatives of l with respect to qi that means for individual uh, say the inventory item i and lambda and set them to zero so when you take the partial derivative of the lagrangian with respect to qi you have this expression set it equals to zero and when you take the partial derivative of the lagrangian with respect to the lambda that is the multiplier so you have just one constraint that's why one multiplier and this is uh, so the expression that means this is the restriction on the average inventory and you have this expression the partial derivative and you set it equals to zero so you have these two equations 
and ultimately uh, what you get after solving these two simultaneous equations uh, we get uh, q i that means the order quantity for the ith, uh, ith uh, item q i this is the expressions you have s i is uh, what is s i s i is the for the ith item what is the annual demand and uh, uh, obviously in this expression uh, you must be able to find out uh, the, the value of lambda. So, uh, so first you get the value of lambda and for lambda you have this expression that means uh, that uh, this is the expression now, now on the numerator what you have the sigma root over S i C u i square these items you have. So, what you try to do that means uh, for each item you get the value of root over S i C u i and uh, you sum them uh, sum them up and then uh, uh, this summation you square. So, you get the expressions or the values of the numerator minus 0.12 that is for a particular case you have this factor uh, these values. So, for determining lambda we compute this one as I have already told you from the given data set. Okay. So, for the given data set we get uh, uh, this value the sigma i equals to 1 to 5. There are 5 items we have considered. So, this value is 625.95 and when you use this value in this expression that is uh, uh, that means uh, the lambda you calculate. So, you get the value of lambda as 0 0.09767 that means once this is known you substitute this value over here you get the value of lambda as 0 0.09767 and the generalized expression of q i that means, this is the expression of q i in physical units and uh, so, the order size that means, in monetary units. So, the, you have these expressions okay, and this is s i c u i root over s i c u i. So, you get these general expressions for each item uh, and expressions for the order quantity. So, hence item wise order size and the number of orders per year are computed as you form you create this table. So, against each item you have the order size you determine you have the formulation and you can easily calculate the number of orders per year when the yearly demand is known. So, you add uh, all the order sizes. So, you get a value of 6000 is it ok. So, 6000 and uh, the number of orders total number of orders is 65.32. So, hence the total variable cost is 10 per order into 65 into 32 per order and plus uh, you know this is your uh, the order size order size by 2 is the average uh, uh, the inventory and so obviously it is 6000 by 2 and the inventory carrying cost is just 12 percent of that. That means ultimately you get uh, the total variable cost as 1013 an increase of rupees 43 in comparison with EOQ based ordering policy. So, in that uh, so EOQ based ordering policy you get uh, there, there is no restriction and that is why you get uh, the minimum cost that is 970. Now, one important issue you need to consider at this stage. So, this is the point you must uh, make a note. How would you formulate the problem? when estimates of ordering and inventory carrying cost are not reliable. So, this is the uh, the real problem we face because uh, you know uh, this ordering cost or inventory carrying cost uh, these estimates are not uh, uh, available in uh, the accounts de accounts department you cannot uh, get them. So, you have to uh, make an extra effort uh, to identify the activities uh, the relating to uh, placement of an order as well as uh, uh, for uh, for holding the inventory in good conditions. So, once you know these activities, so separately you have to uh, estimate the values of the ordering cost and inventory carrying cost. So, uh, whether uh, these estimates are reliable or not uh, depends only on so solely on that how effective your existing information system information system support. So, this is a real problem. Now, so what you try to do? You try to uh, the formulate uh, 
problem as far as possible without uh, uh, you know uh, uh, without considering the estimates of such costs if these estimates are considered unreliable the problem can be formulated in two ways the procedure to be followed is as follows so the total average inventory these notations we have used for uh, say uh, for a group of items and uh, so that is basically the total average inventory this is the expression and the total number of orders we have uh, used this notation to and that is si by qi for the ith item so in the first case there may be restrictions on the number of orders for example the existing inventory policy for five items considered the total number of orders is 60 so we formulate uh, the problem as minimum ti is equals to this one subject to total number of orders si by qi sigma i over i equal to 60. So, hence again the same procedure you have applied that is you form the Lagrangian okay, and uh, this is uh, your condition that is this one you have to minimize this and plus uh, this is the restriction on the total number of orders. So, that is why you have used one uh, say you know uh, Lagrangian multipliers lambda. So, following uh, uh, these steps that means the taking partial derivatives with respect to uh, the decision uh, uh, the variables in this case q i and uh, lambda. So, ultimately you get an expression of lambda like this and when you have these values already you have computed these values. So, you get a value of 54.42. So, please uh, follow the steps we have we have been using uh, uh, you know the similar uh, we have been using all the the steps which already explained in the previous problem the same approach you follow and ultimately uh, the order quantity for the ith item in monetary terms you have these expressions. Next what do you do item wise you calculate the order size and the orders per year as uh, you have done uh, the before uh, and so you have all these values and what you find that order the number of orders is extended to 60. So, you will be getting a value of 60 whereas, the order size is 6529. So, the average inventory is 6529.50 by 2 that is rupees 3265 that means, the average inventory is reduced by 935 or 22.3 percent reduction. So, this is your analysis. In the second case what you do uh, here uh, there is restriction on the average inventory investment. So, what was the restriction? Restriction was uh, 4200. Whereas, under these restrictions what you try to do? You try to minimize the total number of orders. So, this is the expression for the TO subject to the total inventory for which uh, you have these uh, expressions and this uh, the total inventory is restricted to uh, say 4200. So, again uh, you apply the same procedure you form the Lagrangian okay, with 1 uh, lambda and take the partial derivative with respect to qi as well as the partial derivative with respect to lambda and you get an expression for qi as well as in lambda. So, once the lambda is known from the given data set you can easily calculate the order quantity in monetary terms. So, this is the expression for the uh, of uh, the order quantity for the ith item and then for all other items you follow these steps and you get the item wise order size and the number of orders per year. So, the average again what you find that uh, the average inventory investments uh, is restricted to 4200 obviously and but uh, the orders per year. Uh, number of orders is reduced to 46.65 that means 22.3 percent reduction. Hence, uh, the different solutions are obtained while you deal with problems under constraints. However, there is a general relationship between T i and T o. So, what we can do? We have uh, a expressions for T i assuming that uh, EOQ formula holds. So, you have these expressions for T i and another expression for T o please uh, go through these uh, two expressions and hence if you multiply T i with T o you have these expressions and whatever may be your ordering policies 
So, this remains uh, same that is why it is treated as a constant the notation is capital K and if you divide T i by T o you get an expression of C o by J. So, here the J is nothing but uh, actually the inventory carrying cost uh, as a uh, proportion of the average inventory which you hold. So, uh, what you have? You have the expression called T i into T o is a constant. So, it is an equation for uh, rectangular hyperbola. So, this uh, when you have uh, uh, this curve that means, uh, T i into T o equals to k curve this is actually referred to as uh, actually optimal policy curve. So, what you try to do? You try to develop this optimal policy curve and if you can uh, now uh, you in a given situation you can calculate the total inventory as well as the total orders. And so, this value could be at x. So, obviously, the value of x this x or the y these are not uh, you know uh, uh, say uh, they, they do not fall on this particular curve. So, that means, any point falling on this curve represents an optimal policy. Okay. So, you are deviating. So, how to uh, say get uh, the optimal policy. So, there could be several policies. So, you please study this optimal policy curve and we have several examples like uh, you know uh, uh, if you go through this that means, we have considered three points A, B or C optimal policy. So, how to use optimal policy curve for improving inventory control system? It is very, very simple. So, either uh, you uh, you change uh, uh, the say order order number of orders or uh, you change uh, uh, the average uh, inventory and uh, or you can change both. So, what we uh, what we suggest that uh, if you uh, it, there could be you know it, is, it will be easier for you to change uh, uh, only just uh, one particular factor. And uh, so, if you uh, if the same approach you follow that means, uh, uh, when you have more than one restriction. So, I have uh, uh, written down all these uh, particular uh, the, the steps and if you have n number of restrictions obviously, the total number of uh, say the equations you need to consider that is n plus uh, 1. And uh, so, and ultimately the same approach you follow that means, uh, Lagrangian multiplier technique you follow. So, uh, so, uh, later on we will uh, refer to such cases uh, uh, with certain other examples. So, thank you.